Well, it is finally here. I'm not sure we've ever had a meeting that's been more anticipated than this meeting right here. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Fox and welcome to the 2017 Southwest Believers Convention here in Fort Worth, Texas. We are so glad you're with us. And if you are in the area, here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or even maybe the surrounding states, you still have time to get here and we want you to get here. You don't want to miss a bit of this week. It's going to be a lot of fun this week and we're glad to have you this week. You know, if you want to know our speaker schedule, you can go online and look at that, kcm.org. You can look at our uh, speaker schedule if you're going to be watching us online. We're going to have wall-to-wall -wall covers for you this week. Uh, this program has a brand new name. It's called Southwest Live uh, this week. And we've got a lot of great elements we're going to show you. We're going to kind of give you an inside, behind-the-scenes look at the Southwest Believers Convention and all that goes on. You know, most of you that watch, you see what's going on on the platform. But there's so much more that's going on at this meeting. And I'm pleased this week uh, that you're going to be able to see my friend, Greg Stevens. He'll be with us this week, throughout the week. He's going to be showing us some of these behind-the-scenes areas all in and all around this convention center and even some places maybe outside the convention center. So you want to make sure you're with us all this week. We're going to give you a lot of great, you're going to still see some of the same great guests that we have on this program uh, every year. Uh, in fact, we've got two great guests lined up for you this morning uh, that you're really going to enjoy. So this is going to be a lot of fun, everybody. We really are excited to have you here. And of course, this week we are celebrating 50 years, our 50 years in ministry here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. It does not seem possible that we've been doing this that this long. I've been here for a bunch of them. I'm not going to tell you exactly how many yet, but I've been here for a bunch of these. You ever wonder what 50 years looks like in about two and a half minutes of videotape? We're going to show you that. Take a look at this. In 1967, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland established the Kenneth Copeland Evangelistic Association. 1973, the first Believer's Voice of Victory magazine was published. 1976, Kenneth Copeland Ministries opened their first international office. 1978, the first Believer's Commission was held in Anaheim, California. 1979, Gloria Copeland began teaching healing school service. And God wants to do, and He will do, signs and wonders in our day. And Kenneth and Gloria began airing the weekly Believer's Voice of Victory TV broadcast. 1981 marked the first Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Shout amen, somebody! <laughs> 1982, KCM organized and hosted the World Communion Service via satellite, uniting the body of Christ around the world in communion. 1986, Kenneth Copeland obeys the direction of the Lord and begins writing his monthly partner letter. 1996, KCM.org was launched. 2006, the Citation 10 purchased by the Elite CX team began its travels around the world. 2012, the HD TV truck was purchased by the Elite CX team and the first high definition BVOV TV broadcast was produced. 2015, the Believer's Voice of Victory Network was launched. Since these first milestones, Kenneth Copeland Ministries has distributed over 390,000 monthly magazines for free around the world, opened a total of six international offices, and aired over 9,000 Believer's Voice of Victory TV broadcasts. Since 1984, there have been more than 116 million salvations through KCM and their partner ministries. And in the last year alone, two million prayer requests were prayed over. KCM is now celebrating 50 years of ministry and there is more to come. Remember this, Jesus, Jesus is Lord. 50 years, the Jubilee year celebration of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Hello, I'm Greg Stevens, associate pastor here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries and Eagle Mountain International Church. It is so exciting. I'm telling you, it's electric. Where I'm at, I'm in the exhibit hall, the bookstore area. Um, and all the other products, you Creflo Dollar is here, Jerry Savelle and Jesse and everybody that you know. What's really interesting is right behind me, we're, this week we're going to show you some things that you don't normally get to see because we want you to be part of this convention and this moment. Right behind me is the, the area that's celebrating 
50 years, Super Kids, and then back behind that, Believer's Voice of Victory Network. So many exciting things. We're going to take you around, let you see some of these things. One really cool thing is Brother Copeland's car. You've heard him tell the story about in his station wagon and the car with the tape deck in the back. Well, it's here. The 1973 Buick is here. We're going to go over there and show you all of that and all the many things that make this convention and this moment special. Going to take you in and let you see Super Kids, let you see 1440, uh, the youth program. So, so many things that we want you to be part of this week. And I know it's going to be a blessing to you as we, as we meet different people. You can see people are still registering and they're still coming. And I want to encourage you, what Tim said earlier, if you can make it, get here. This is going to be a very special week. And I know that God has a word just for you. And you don't want to miss that. It's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'll be coming to you live from in here and all around the convention center all week long. Tim, let's go back to you now. Hey, Greg, can you still hear me? Can Greg still yep, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Greg, if you get the keys to that car, let me know. We'll take a little joy ride around the convention. You know the keys are in it right now. Oh, so. excellent. Well, we'll get on that in a little while. We'll take yeah, a little joy ride. I'll, follow, I'll follow you on that. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah. It's going to be great having Greg. I'm so excited about having him with me all this week. He's a great guy. And as you can tell, uh, very passionate about the things of the Lord and this ministry. And we're excited about all that's going to happen this week. Uh, I wanted to start this morning off uh, with this being our 50th year in ministry, the biggest meeting we do all year and probably the biggest meeting we've done in many years uh, with our events manager, Kurt Shellstrom is with me this morning. And I, I guess the first question I have for you is four, five hours sleep, three hours sleep. What have you been going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's about six, so we're good. <laughs> went to bed about 12.30 last night, was up at Larn, went off at five o'clock this morning, got my stuff, we're ready to go. Kurt uh, is the guy that's in charge of putting all of this together. And of course, he has a great team of people that help him do this, but Kurt oversees this, and we started doing this, what, Wednesday of this week? Yeah, we started uh, marking points. You know, we have 68 motors up in the ceilings holding all this stuff up in the in the arena. And so we started marking points on Tuesday, Wednesday we started, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, so 12 hour days with 50 plus staff. Today we have close to almost 400 staff and volunteers here making this whole thing happen. You've been doing this job now a little over a year. Give me a sense uh, from your perspective what, what this experience has been like for you? Well, you know, I've been in the ministry since 1994 and I worked for another organization for 18 years doing events all over the globe. Um, and then coming over here to KCM, being a part of this, to see the people come from all 50 states, from all over the globe for an event like this, to really, as we've been calling it, a faith infusion. And for me, you know, being a part behind the scenes, really, this is, you know, not normal for me. Uh, it's, it's just an, an honor to be a part of and to see people's lives change. You know, just like last night with the One Worship today, people coming in uh, and staying. We have over 9,000 hotel rooms booked in the city. You know, our registration is up. People are excited, Just watching on social media, Facebook, internet, all the, uh, all the avenues that we promote this event. And so uh, I'm excited if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, yeah, it's not hard to tell at all. We've already mentioned the fact that uh, outside of this arena, there are a lot of things going on. Uh, tell me about, uh, let's start with Super Kids, uh, which is a ministry that we've been doing for uh, many, many, many years. It's been a, a staple of our Believers Conventions for all these years of, of ministry to kids, and it's not babysitting, is it? That's, you know, when I, last year was my first uh, Southwest, and to see the kids, you know, when the adults are here in this arena, and to go back there and see kids as age 6 to 12 years old, worshiping passionately, hearing the word of faith being delivered to them in kid style, and it is not a babysitting service. And what's great is that when kids are dropped off there, they don't want to leave. They don't want to <laughs> <They don't wanna laughs> go back with mom and dad. And we have a whole experience for the kids this year where they can walk through, see Commander Kelly, Commander Kim, and all the commanders that are running Super Kids. Uh, it's just a joy to see these little kids come out and they're just lit like a Christmas tree when they're when they're done every day. And so you think they'd be tired, but man, they're charged up. Now you've got kids that age, right? I do. I have ages 7, 11, and 15. So my 15-year-old will be up in uh, 1440. So kids uh, ages 13 through 18 are up in 1440. Again, it's not a babysitting yeah, I service. I know you're really excited about that <laughs> because you have done a lot of work, a lot of leg work, uh, and, and the Lord has blessed you, and, and the Lord's helped us get a lot of really great speakers 
for that meeting this week. Talk about some of the guys that are going to be over there, guys and gals speaking this well, week. Well, you know, we have uh, with uh, 1440 this year, we have Todd White coming in. We have Michael Koulianis, and they just finished the call in Cleveland with Lou Engel last week, and they're coming here. Uh, Todd's on deck for tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Michael Koulianis Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Uh, Javen Chavez from Christ for the Nations and so many others, Dean Sykes and others. Yeah. And so we are just charged up because I wanted last year, I wanted kids to be impacted impacted so much when they go back to their hotel rooms, uh, they're laying hands on their parents. Yeah. And um, and so it's not fun and games and getting tickled, but man, these kids are, I mean, all over the floor uh, during worship and during the ministry time. And that's that's our goal. Yeah. When you uh, when you start preparing for a week like this, uh, I, I don't know if you can totally prepare because there's so much involved in this. Uh, you really do rely on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? There's no doubt about it. You really do rely on the Holy Spirit to do this. Uh, what are some of the things that you do to help you uh, get into a week like this? Well, number number one is mentally and <laughs> and, and spiritually because, yeah. you know, someone said yesterday, are you okay, Kurt? And, you know, I do. I still, after doing events since 1995, I still get the, the pre-jitters, you know, sure. as, as they say. And, you know, because I, I am a perfectionist. I like things to go right. And you, when you walk in here, you know, the experience is not just here in the arena, but when people drive down Houston Commerce Street, they see the flags and they see the things in the hotels they see the clings on the ground and so many other things that we've done to make this a welcoming experience from every for everyone yeah. and so yeah you know I I do I prepare spiritually and I prepare mentally uh, but I still have to do this for so long I, just, I still get nervous and so um, but uh, man last night man I, I can't I can't say enough it was yeah. uh, it's everything we had hoped for and yeah. prayed for you mentioned the banners uh, Talk about how the city of Fort Worth, our home city, by the way, this, of course, our, our national, international headquarters right here in Fort Worth, Texas. Talk about how this city has embraced what we're doing and they're so glad that we're here. Exactly, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, with the city of Fort Worth last year when I got together with them, you know, I'd ask them to get behind us financially and, and to help us promote this event uh, to the public. And so not just Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, but putting the 40 foot banner that's out in front of our arena, all the flags that are down Houston Commerce Street, all the hotel banners and the things that they're doing uh, to really help us, the discounts at all the different restaurants around the city, uh, they're all part of that. And we, we couldn't do it without the Fort Worth yeah. CVB and, and the Fort Worth Convention Center. You know, I wanted to mention last year out of the 399 events that the convention center did. We're one of 11 citywide at the magnitude that this is uh, that does events here, but we're the longest running event here at the Fort Worth Convention Center, 36 years. 36 years, that, that's absolutely astounding. And really, uh, the economic impact of Fort Worth. Talk a little yeah. bit about that, but the economic impact of, of, of us having this here. Yeah, and so just about two weeks ago, the Fort Worth uh, Star-Telegram put an ad and uh, promoted this event, other events that are coming in uh, to the city, uh, city-wide. Uh, but this event here, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, generates $18 million for the city of Fort Worth through jobs and different avenues, restaurants and all the things, hotels. When you book 9,000 hotel <laughs> rooms, it's gonna have an ec economic in impact. And so it's so great to see uh, uh, the city getting behind us, the Fort Worth PD that's here on site, C CSC security, all the people that it takes, all the convention center. I mean, it's an army of people yeah. uh, behind the scenes. And yeah. like you know, we talked about, we're going to be going behind the scenes all week to really show our partners and friends that aren't here. And if you live here in the Fort Worth Dallas Metroplex, do yourself a favor and get here. Go online, kcm.org backslash Southwest. See the schedule, don't miss a session. If you can come one session, all the sessions, we go from the morning to night. There's no excuse for you living here in the city of Fort Worth not to be here at the Fort Worth Convention Center. No, I don't think I can say it much better than Sorry, that. Sorry, I had to say it. I, I don't think I can add a whole lot to that. You talk about a, a, a amazing group of people. Talk about the people that it takes staff-wise to do what we're doing this week. You know, we, our whole entire KCM, Eagle Mountain Church staff, everyone comes behind this event and supports it in different areas from registration to greeters, to book table, uh, to TV, uh, everything. But there's over, right on deck right now, there's over 400 staff and volunteers working in different capacities from super kids to 1440, TV, security, ushers, greeters. I mean, it's an army of people. And uh, hey, we're we're first day. We're we're ready to go. <laughs> are you always this? Are you, 
Hey, I'm going to do a praise break like John Gray did yesterday, <laughs> so hold on. He was really good. Let's talk uh, real briefly about last night. i got about a minute left. About this event last night, I even told Courtney last night, I said, you know, a lot of times when you have a, a meeting that you promote and you advertise, th so many times it doesn't live up to the advertisement. Boy, last night yeah. blew it out of the water, didn't it? It was everything we had prayed for and expected, you know, and John, John is one of the busiest preachers right now, traveling all over the globe at conferences and that, and of course, He's the associate pastor for Joel Steen in Houston. 8,000 people on Wednesday nights show up to his Wednesday night services. And to have him here last night to deliver a timely message for us to kick off uh, our 50th anniversary celebration, 2017 Southwest Believers Convention. Yeah. It was, uh, man, those that missed it, <laughs> they missed I mean, I was sitting up on, I mean, I run, I'm running the vent. I'm sitting over on the side just weeping like a baby because it's like seeing people worshiping all over this uh, arena last night was something special. And he, he enjoyed himself, didn't he? Yeah, and he actually changed his plane ticket and he'll be here today. No kidding. Yes. Well, I expect maybe to see him <laughs> later on today. That, that would be something fun. Now listen, if you weren't here last night, if you didn't get a chance to watch it online or watch it on the network, we wanna take you back to last night and show you just a few of the highlights of our one worship service. Watch this. Surrounding us in perfect love Glory falling like an avalanche I'm swept away I'm swept away with you I can feel your heartbeat beating, beating for us Here And what an amazing room this is because it reflects the kingdom of God in that I can't tell whose church it is because I see white worshiping next to black, worshiping next to Mexican, worshiping next to Puerto Rican, next to Jamaican, next to Nigerian, next to Canadian. And this is the kingdom of God that we lay down culture and pick up the kingdom and the only color that matters in here is red and it's the blood of Jesus. Well, as I said last night, that is an outstanding way to kick off what is going to be an amazing life-changing week. And I don't use those words uh, as just adjectives just to throw in. This week, if you will immerse yourself in what we're doing here this week, this week will be a life changing week because the Word of God is gonna be preached this week. It's gonna be preached in every venue we have, in this room, our Super Kids, our 1440. The Word of God is gonna be preached and when the Word of God is preached to a, a receptive heart, you have to have your heart ready. Get your heart ready to receive this week. I wasn't supposed to preach this morning, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna encourage you really quick. Get your heart ready to receive what God has this week. This is going to be a week that you have never experienced before in your life if you've never been a part of this. And if you've been a part of one, like John Gray said last night, don't be casual about the Holy Spirit, about the presence of the Holy Spirit. He said that last night and it went off in me. Do not be casual about the presence of the Holy Spirit. If you've been doing this for so long, don't, don't get that way where you go, oh, I've heard that, I've seen that. Act like you've never heard this before, act like you've never seen it before, and I promise you, you will be different when this week is over. I am pleased and excited to have my good friend and a good friend of this ministry, Dean Sykes, with me. Thanks, buddy, good to be here. You, uh, you're gonna be speaking in 1440 this week, uh, and of course, 
Dean's been on the program before. We've had him on, and you know a lot about You Matter and Dean Sykes Ministries, uh, ministering to teenagers. Uh, you never get tired of doing what you're doing. Every time I talk to you, uh, you always have another story, and you always yeah. have another testimony about kids that lives have been changed. You know, Tim, I just I love what we get to do in life. I told someone this morning, I saw them over at breakfast, they were talking about what we do, and I said, this is not work for me. Yeah. I, I mean, this is what we are called to do, it's what we're passionate about, and you know, we now have been doing it 25 and a half years, and uh, we have bounced around the globe telling young people that God loves you, He's not mad at you, and in Him, you matter. Yeah. When God first called you to do that, uh, and we've talked about it so many times, I, I don't want to rehash too much, but there, may, there are probably people watching us sure. that have never heard. Uh, your story or heard your testimony about what God put you in. What, when God called you to do this, what, where were you in your life? I was running. <laughs> I had running <laughs> shoes on. And I was running from God as hard as I could. I'd been in church all my life. I knew about God, but I didn't know God. And so I said to them one day, I said, Lord, if you're real, I don't think you are. But if you are, prove it. And then I forgot, you know, two weeks went by. And I, and I tell teenagers every time I get to minister, don't, don't ever ask God, the creator of the universe, to prove to you that he's real. Because he will. <laughs> two weeks go by, I'm sitting in my office dialing a phone and I hear the audible voice of God say, call mom. I dialed my parents' number and at that instant, my mother was attempting suicide. I was able to get to their home, got her to a hospital and that day, God supernaturally just radically saved her. From, I mean, she was fine, the doctor said it's a miracle of God. Since that day, she went on back to school, became a doctor herself and today is helping others come through that which she came through. Yeah. And so uh, interesting, all these decades later, God has us in a ministry that's called You Matter, talking with teenagers about why your life is better than your death. Were you ever intimidated at the very beginning, talking oh. to teenagers, being going to these schools and doing that in front of a big group of people? Yeah, when I first began, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to be the behind the scenes guy. I would book speakers, I would do all that. And then God just kept gently leading me to the stage. And uh, you know, used to, I would show up in a suit, Looked a lot like you, Tim, to be honest with you. The <laughs> kids ran from me the other way. And so now I show up, you know, in a pair of jeans or khakis, never wear socks. And uh, they come because it's the anointing that God's called us. Just he's given us to do one thing, bring hope to this generation. Yeah. Is there something, is there freedom in that no sock thing? Oh man, I'm telling you, you, you don't wear socks, you'll be free as a bird. <laughs> now tell me, well, free, that's a good one. Free as a bird with no socks. Yeah. Tell me about your, uh, experience with Brother Copeland and how, when you met wow. him and, and the time that you've been with him. He is, there is, there's no one like him. Yeah. I mean, he is, I mean, it, you talk about touching the heartstrings in, a, in an instant. It's when you bring him up because he has, he's like a spiritual dad to me. He took me under his wing, literally, uh, because of some things that happened in our ministry in aviation. We lost some engines in flight and uh, just- That's he, not a good thing. No, no, no. Thankfully we had two engines, <laughs> but I lost two engines in 10 days on two different airplanes. Wow. And, Devil's trying to get. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Brother Copeland heard about it through Matt Gober, who's in heaven now. And um, when Brother Copeland and I connected, you know, it was just it was one of those family moments where he just he brought me in. And now um, he's allowed me to do a lot, you know, in association with KCM and get to meet guys like you and be on these broadcasts. And you know, it's just uh, I always share with people when I get to talk about it, you know. Partnership with KCM is the real deal because what you see on these stages yeah. is what is what it really is behind those stages. Yeah. And um, I'm 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 a big cheerleader for, for he and Gloria and KCM. Well, I know he believes so much in what you do as we all do, and he's uh, he's real big on that partnership and and doing things. You know, uh, partnership is not about money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's an aspect of it, but partnership's not about money. It's about it's about coming together. It's agreement. Because together we can do more right. than we can individually. That's right. And you can go to places and get in places. I, I, I suspect that it would be really tough for Kenneth Copeland, even Kenneth Copeland, to get in some of the schools that you get into. Well, you know, Tim, it's God has sent me to schools that have had school shootings. Yeah. And you know, I've, I've done over 3,000 schools now. And we never charge anybody anything. So if you're a high school principal and you, our office calls you and says, hey, over 3,000 schools, here's our message, here's this testimony. Oh, by the way, we're not gonna charge you. Right. You know, we, with scheduling isn't really a problem, thankfully. And so it's just what I'm called to do. Exactly. You know, you're exactly. called to do TV. Right. He's called to minister to the masses. Right. I'm called to reach teenagers. And right. together, in agreement, that yeah. Matthew 8. But you couldn't do what you do no. without the support of your partners no. like KCM. No. No. We, we, no. Because <laughs> if you don't charge, <laughs> yeah, right. this isn't rocket science. Right. But they, you know, when I talked to Brother Copeland about it, he, he's he's very intentional about the fruit. That's a good way to put it. Intentional. The fruit. Yeah. You know, it's this is what we're called to do. And what's great is everybody out there. Everybody watching right now is called. 
Yes. We're all called. The Bible yes. says the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. The gifts are plural. The calling in that verse is singular. So when you're in your one calling, guess what? All of your gifts will operate. And I know that's one thing that you are, you, you stress heavily in these meetings with these teenagers. They all have a destiny. Oh my gosh. God called them to do something. When I, when I minister tonight there, I'm going to talk about the recalculating of your life. Yes. I brought this. You know, we sign, have students sign our pledge cards. Right. A young lady somewhere on the road sent this card to me and says, thank you for opening my eyes. And I thought about that in, in relationship to tonight's service and all that's going to happen this week. I believe that thousands and thousands of people's eyes are going to be open to the truth, that they do matter, that they are called, that there is a destiny with which they are called to fulfill. And get, here's, the, here's the miraculous moment. No one can do it the way God's called you to do it. That's right. And so I tell teenagers, be the best you that you can be. Don't compare yourself to everybody else. That's a waste of time. That's absolutely the truth. Don't be you. Yeah. And it, it, the thing I find so exciting is, you know, we hear these people uh, complaining about and screaming about separation of church and state uh, and about ministries and people going into schools. And I can't imagine why you'd be so dense and so thick headed that you wouldn't realize that something like what you're doing in the culture that we live in today with the way teenagers are being bombarded from all sides yep. with negative images and negative thoughts and wanting to kill themselves. I can't imagine why somebody would not look at that and say, boy, that's a good thing. Every day in America on average, the latest number is 5,240 teenagers attempt suicide. In an arena that seats 12,000, yeah. every 60 hours this arena would fill up with teenagers who in the previous two and a half days had bought the lie. When I go to a school that's had a school shooting, you know what the principal say to me? Say whatever you want to say. Say whatever you want to say. I'm like, well, if I say whatever I want to say, we're going to get kicked out. And they go, no, we just buried three students who ended their lives or who were in a shooting. So, no, you, you need to go up there because what we're doing, yeah. Yeah. we need some help in this. And I don't have all the answers, but I have the answer. Yes, you do. I have the answer. You bet you. And when he shows up, oh, my wife tells me, God spoke through a donkey. <laughs> well, we're both sitting here, so there's proof right there, right? <laughs> true, true statement. True statement. <laughs> you had kids give you razor blades. Yes. You've had kids hand you stuff yeah, it's, over the years. When I, when I, I did it at a convention here in, in the Texas area, a young lady walked up to me. Can we talk? Yeah. Can I tell you my name? Sure. Can I tell you my story? She pulled up her sleeve like this, and she'd been cutting her arm just horrifically. We talked a little bit more. She said, can I give you something? And Tim, she put her hand into her bag with tears streaming down her face, her hands shaking. She hands me a blood-stained razor blade. It says, I'll never forget her. Her name is Megan. She says, I don't want to hurt myself anymore. You know what's interesting? Every single teenager, without exception, every single one of them who've handed me a razor blade, a sharp object, a knife, whatever, have said this sentence. I hurt myself to stop the pain. Wow. And I'm going, you got to understand, the enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. Yeah. He twists truth. Yeah. Think about what you just said. You hurt yourself to stop pain. And then their eyes kind of, the aha moment, and I go, let me tell you how you can really stop the pain. And it's not by cutting. Mm. It's by taking on the person who was beaten for you, yes. who went to a yes. cross for you, yes. so that you wouldn't have to cut right. yourself. Yeah. I get a sense that there may be parents watching that don't yeah. know how to reach their kids. How, how do they do it? The Bible says in Proverbs, Living Bible, open communication permits progress. I share with parents a lot that if you are a safe place to hear bad news, you're doing your job right. If all you ever hear is everything's great, you bet your antenna better go up. Yes, sir. Because it's, it's a different world than it was 25 and a half years ago when I started this. Yeah. The internet was just coming on right. when I started. Right. And so now as we're out there, I share with parents, you know what? Love never fails. Amen. Keep the lines of communication open. Amen. And be safe, be a safe place to hear bad news. I'm a big believer in Christian counseling. Yeah. I'm a big believer sure. in getting young people you into people who are anointed yeah. to do what they do. Yeah. You know how much I love you. I love my buddy. <laughs> I, do. I do. Thanks for this opportunity. Oh, thank you for doing this. Uh, and Dean is, is one of many speakers that will be over in 1440. You heard Kurt mention it earlier. Some of the speakers, Todd White, Michael Koulianis, uh over in our uh, 1440, and of course, in uh, our Super Kids, Commander Kelly, and. Uh, all of that team over there. It's going to be a great week. And again, if you can get down here, please get down here and be a part of this. If you're watching us all this week, we want you to be involved social media wise. You can hashtag SWBC17 uh, when you hashtag uh, on your social media. Uh, and if you're not following us, Copeland Network on Instagram, Copeland Network on Twitter, and of course, Facebook. You want to make sure you follow us. We are going to have all kinds of stuff on those platforms this week that you don't want to miss. Well, it is time for Pastor Terry and our pre-service 
uh, this morning. She's going to do pre-service prayer this morning. You want to make sure you hang around for that. In 30 minutes, the service begins. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you in a little while.